Welcome back to Looking for Geeks. We're going to talk a little wrestling this week because on Saturday is All Elite Wrestling's second event, Fighter Fest. Now, for those that don't know, you can watch this for free in the U.S. on BR Live. That's Bleacher Report's app. In international markets, there will be a pay-per-view option, and it's a pretty low price from what I've seen. So let's start with the buy-in pre-show. First, we have Michael Nakazawa versus... Who? <laughs> Michael Nakazawa! Alex Jabaley. Versus Alex Jabaley, who is the CEO of CEO? He's the organizer of the event that Fighter Fest is taking place at. Michael Nakazawa. From what I've seen, Nakazawa is going to be more of a trainer and a fun event kind of guy, so I think this is going to be a fun promotional match. And we're probably going to see Jabaley come out on top because he is the um, celebrity guest. I think this will probably set up for a screwy finish and maybe give Nakazawa something to do later on as well. One of the other announced matches for the pre-show is a three-way tag match with Best Friends, SCU, and Private Party who are newcomers to AEW. Whoever wins this match gets a bye in the first round of the upcoming tag title tournament. They haven't announced when that's going to start, but I would guess we may see the first round at All Out. Now, one way or the other, I get the feeling the Dark Order is going to play into the end of this match. One way we could see is Best Friends getting attacked and taken out during the match so they can't win, or if the Best Friends do win, I think the Dark Order will run in at the end just to take them out again. Either way, I think the Best Friends are coming out on top of this one. There is rumor of a third match on the pre-show, Kylie Ray versus Leva Bates, the other other librarian. I don't know who to root for. I just like books. Can I vote for the books? <laughs> if we do end up seeing this match, I get the feeling we'll see Kylie take it, since she needs some momentum after her loss at their first event, Double or Nothing. On to the main show, first up we have Christopher Daniels versus Shima. This is kind of a tough call. These are both uh, industry vets and guys that came up the system together. Shima was actually one of Daniel's trainers way back when. I do see Shima taking this match and setting up a storyline where Christopher Daniels isn't as effective without his SCU brothers. Well, what about Curry Man? Poor Curry Man. Next, we have a three-way women's match with Yuki Sakazaki, Riho, and Nyla Rose. In her last match, Nyla Rose didn't have a whole lot of time to shine, so I would pick her initially, but at the same time, Yuki has been making waves, and she got a lot of attention at her Double or Nothing appearance, so I think Yuki may end up with the win here. Then we have a four-way match between Hangman Page, MJF, Jimmy Havoc, and Jungle Boy. This one is kind of hard to call. Uh, initially, I thought MJF was going to take it, but after this week's Being the Elite... They really set up that he needs to get his ass kicked. So I think Hangman is going to come out on top and have some momentum going into that world title shot against Jericho at All Out. But if I'm wrong, if MJF does win this and Hangman then goes on to lose to Jericho at All Out, I think we'll see a Hangman redemption arc where he doubles down and really comes out of the gate and starts winning matches afterwards, building up to another title shot early next year. However, I think MJF will be the roadblock and MJF may actually win the title before Hangman ever does, which would be a great redemption for Hangman to beat MJF for that title. Then there's Cody against Darby Allen. Man, I've seen Darby Allen live, and he is phenomenal. This match is going to be a sleeper again. I think Cody can really bring out the best in other wrestlers, and Darby's got a lot to show off here. He's scary, honestly. Yeah, Darby is, he takes his life into his own hands when he wrestles. He he throws it all in, and he really goes after it. He's incredibly athletic and just a daredevil in the ring. Then there's John Moxley versus Joey Janela. This isn't billed as a hardcore match. I don't think that's going to fool anyone. There's going to be a table spot. There might be other weapon spots. It's going to get ugly pretty quick. I will make this bold prediction. Joey Janela is going through something and Moxley is winning. In the main event, we have the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, the Elite, against the Lucha Brothers with Laredo Kid. This is a tough one to call. The Lucha Brothers and the Young Bucks have gone one-to-one -one recently with them both beating and losing for the AAA tag titles. 
I think the wild card here is Laredo Kid, who is not necessarily well known in the U.S. And I think he may take the sacrificial fall to Kenny Omega, who needs some momentum after losing to Jericho for that world title shot coming up at All Out. Either way, I expect this match to be all over the place, in the air, on the floor. It's going to be intense, and I think everybody's going to really bring their A-game to this. After the event, be sure to let me know how I did below. And coming up next month, stay tuned for my predictions for Fight for the Fallen, featuring Brandy versus Ali, Omega versus Shima, and Cody and Dustin Rhodes against the Young Bucks. With those matches alone, this next one is promising to be just as good as Fighter Fest. We'll see you next time. You didn't notice my shirt? Yes, it does say Bullet Sponge. Because Roadhog.